At level 50 you unlock the possibility to warp in your whole character instead of just levels. In my last video I went over the progression path you take to get to tier 3. But how does gearing work? How do you make your character do ooga boonga damage? We'll go over that today. I'll go over the key points to make your character stronger. So first of all we have the weapon. The weapon can be obtained from chaos dungeons, abyssal dungeons and legion raids. These weapons have some properties, like quality, weapon attack and additional damage. The main point to consider is the quality of the weapon. The higher quality, the higher additional damage it has. How to increase weapon attack? Weapon attack is increased by enhancing the gear. So if you go to this NPC right here, you can select the bow and you can enhance it. Since this weapon is obtained from a battle pass, it means we can't really properly view the materials. Every enhancement costs some materials. I'll go over how to get these materials a bit later on. Once you enhance the gear, you will get a bonus attack as you can see here. Other thing that you must consider is the armor. The weapon and the armor have a thing called tripod effects. These tripod effects level up your bonus uh, attributes. As an example, I have this quickly prepare tripod and double shot. As you see, double shot is a level 1 tripod and quickly prepare is level 3. These levels are increased by the tripod levels you get from armor and weapons. So you have to uh, choose the correct tripod to boost the skills you want to well, boost. You can set these tripods in this window so if you get any gear piece that contains a tripod you want, you will see it by having a little icon around your gear. So let's say I pick up, you see these tripods, so I pick the skill, I select this, select this tripod and let's say I want this one. We save, we have three tripods selected and if any gear has, has that set, we will see it. So you can see the hat has this, with the little icon next to the tripod effects, charging shot quickly prepare. So this is how you can quickly notice the gear that have that correct tripod. This is one of the well, one of the most important ways to get up. So about the tripods, if you find the tripod that you need from a gear piece, let's say like this, I want a specific stat. Let's say I need perfect shot, so I can choose to replace any any slot I choose to. So let's say I want to get rid of some of these. Let's say I want to get rid of this, and I want to get perfect shot. I will need to pay some. Silver, which is super easy to obtain, you just press replacement and you go. Now, it succeeds. It's easy like that. But let's say I want to replace a higher level one. So let's say oh, there's level two one. So if I choose to get the level two one, there's uh, a lower chance. And instead, you can use this. This will just increase the. It will make your chance double. And these are not that difficult to get, you can get it from your estates or buy it from the uh, marketplace. Stuff is simple. But this is how you get proper uh, proper tripods. And later on you can register them here. Let's say apply. And there we go. So for three, three content I have these tripods ready. So if I ever want to, let's say swap tripods very quickly, I just press this apply. And boom, I go. So how is this useful? You can make uh, sets for let's say raiding, raiding tripods and chaos dungeon tripods that will make you do those more efficiently. The other thing we have to consider is the accessories. Accessories have additional stats like critical and agility in this case or some other, other stats. You have to focus on these stats, the ones that are recommended by the class guides you choose. The, well, the class you choose to play. So for my class, uh, I guess we, I want critical and agility, and so I get accessories that increase those stats. Accessories also have a thing called engravings. We will go over that a little later when I'll talk about engravings very in depth. At tier two, you unlock uh, a thing called gems. Gems or jewels. 
these gems are used to upgrade a specific skill of your kit that are equipped on your this window so i want to equip something i just go like press like this what these do these enhance a specific skill in uh, some special special ways some are just increasing damage and some just reduce the cooldown so how do you get these jewels you get them from doing chaos dungeons or getting from the uh, market and uh, once i get some of these let's say i got these from chaos i can go and fuse them and this is a lot of rng but it is what it is so you just have to keep rolling until you get the ones you need i don't think it really matters what you fuse it just matters that it's the same level so at tier 2 you can get some jumps and i would recommend to actually not focus on them just skip through just get to tier 3 and start getting gems there those will be more way more important since uh the two gems will get reduced effectiveness in tier 3 and um, i would really recommend to focus to level 7 at the most you should go climb slowly bit by bit level 2 level 3 level 4 until you get to level 7 and i guess you should kind of stop there unless you want to risk and keep re-rolling later on but this is where the difference between the whales and the free to play comes in and they get like 16% more damage i think on those skills which isn't it's fine it's nothing huge still in the end it matters how you play the game anyways so whales can get to level 10 easily and free to play is just focused to get to level 7. now i'll talk about runes i don't have that many runes in uh, russia but i can still talk about them so these are runes that you can get from completing uh, some quests uh, doing some collectibles or f focusing on your adventure books some some have here why are these important these will just enhance one of your one of your skills so you can uh, do more damage or have some recovery less cooldown and these will add up on some damage will definitely help your character progression uh where to get specific runes uh, i will I will link um, a guide in the description below of some other creators who have given you like a proper list of these uh, runes where you get them and what you should get. Skill points are really important to, you know, on your character since you can unlock specific tripods for a skill. So if a level a skill is level four to seven and ten, you can unlock these tripods that boost your skill in some way. So if you look at this uh, equilibrium skill, at level four I unlock this these three tripods, and I can choose one of these to enhance my skills. So I chose the one that debuffs the enemy, and my my whole team does ten percent more critical chance. And then at level seven you unlock these lines, the green ones, and you choose anything you want. You just look up a guide; it will just tell you what uh, what is the best, or you can actually figure it out on your own. It's not that difficult. At level ten you get a choice between this tripod and this tripod i mean every skill has a different one so make sure you follow a guide and level uh, level 55 and level 60 combat you can level up these skills to level 11 and level 12 and uh, it gives a pretty much a significant boost in damage so getting level 55 is important but you don't rush this you just you just play the game and have fun and it's gonna slowly climb up now let's talk about cards Cards are really also important to give you some slight edge over some other people who don't have these cards or choose a different kind of card set. On the website uh, lostart.maxroll.gg you can find some guides to recommend you some card sets. So these cards will give you some sort of set effect based on the card level and the, the set they come from. So for beginners we recommend this kind of card set which give you you know damage reduction and uh, tankiness so you can easily survive on the harder content and later on you can focus on this this card set which gives you resistances and most importantly critical chance there's some other car card sets that give you specific elemental damage so if you go to your character i mean if you go to legacy cards collection you can see all of these cards now 
This is the card set that gives you critical chance. So you need to collect these cards. And once you put in uh, four of these cards, they will give you a set effect of darkness and resistances. And it tells it tells you, you need level 30, let's say, for the last effect. Like how do you get level 30 points when there's like six cards? That means you have to level up these cards. You see these little uh, orange orbies, jewels? That's what that is your card level. How do you increase these? You need to get duplicate of the card and get some card EXP. So once you get to this window, you can select any card you want. Let's see, I'll select this. And you use your card EXP. I don't have that many. But you use the card XP, use some money. You grow it, and if you have duplicates, you can level up. The first level you need one duplicate, for the second level you need two duplicates, and it goes so on. So, how to get cards? You just do dungeons, as usual, or you can go to the Traveling Merchant, which is a, a sea thing. There's a little boat always going around, where you can uh, buy things. I will show, uh, show about it more when I talk about materials. Now let's talk about engravings. Engravings are is a big essential part of your character's kit. It is where your main damage source comes from. So if you go to seals effects right here, it's gonna be different in our version. You get these engravings. Now what do engravings do? They give you some sort of special effect that like increases damage or has some other utility type stuff. There are also class engravings that every single class has a uh, unique uh, engraving. You need to get these as well, at least one of them for most classes. Some classes can use even two. How to know which engraving to get. There are a lot of guides on the internet that you can easily find and access and they will tell you which engravings you should really focus on. Grudge engraving is the most important one since it gives the most damage increase and the biggest value. But the issue is that everyone wants this, so in the market it's gonna be really expensive. There's some other one good ones. Let's say um adrenaline is really good for let's say gunslinger who or classes that cast a lot of skills, you can stack up the buffs and you get more critical chance. There are also other great ones like supercharge for really slow classes that have a lot of charging skills this will help you with that and there are other like utility ones let's say fast just increases the channel speed maybe like a sorceress could use this if you really want if you feel like casting times are way too long but how do you get these engravings <laughs> there's a lot, there are a lot of ways to get these engravings i will show some of you some of these well one of the first few ways is to get dude tower Tower will award you with cards and some uh, class engravings early on. Other ways are Chaos Dungeon Grind. So the typical Chaos Dungeon you can do, you can grind it infinitely, even if you're out of the limit. And they can still drop an engraving. But I also can go here to this man and uh, I'll buy them with these uh, crystals you get while grinding when you have done your daily limit. So this is another way to get it. You can also do Guardian Raids, Abyss Dungeons, a Buy from the Market, and well, well, early on it's not gonna be full, but later on you can definitely buy anything you want. Uh, some accessories give, like I see this gives me Vital Attack, Sharp Blunt, Grudge as well, and well, you can buy these accessories from the market or just drop it from the content you're doing get it from the field boss and the islands. Some of the islands I will mention that give you quite a bit of engravings that you should consider doing it early on in the game. So they are called Estella, Utopia, Sunflower Island, the Reminiscence Isle, Frostfire Island, Slime Island, Valpurgis Island and Argon Island. You can find these islands on any kind of page. I think papunica.com is a good way to see where are, are these locations. Uh, also, you, you get it from the stone. The stone has some other engraving properties and a debuff engraving as well, like with these accessories. And you don't want any of these debuff uh, engravings if you can avoid these. But the stone also has engravings, so make sure you get this as well. And try to cut it perfectly. 
that this is RNG stone, so you might need it up a, up a, a couple tries, but I'm sure you can manage it. Now, since you need uh, a lot of materials for enhancing, how do you get these materials? Well, first of all, the typical Chaos Dungeon. This Chaos Dungeon has materials for enhancing. As we saw, you need these, and it's right here. You can also get it from PP. So, if you PP, you get these metals, tokens, and you can buy enhanced uh, materials from here as well. And as well, you can get it from the guild. The guild shop should have enhancing materials. And make sure your guild has unlocked some of these. Because later on, you will need higher uh, guild levels, guild stats. So, you can trade some materials like this. this we need to get trader, trading mastery to go buy this. So make sure you join a correct guild that do focus on these things and make sure to donate to the guild to have the materials for this. So let's go to the guild. So make sure you go guild support and contribute your silver. This is really important. Your guild leader will love you. So always use this. This with the gold, don't use gold. Your guild leader will call you stupid and kick you out for doing this. Don't, don't give this. Unless you really don't value this, unless you're a big ass whale, do this. Like, like as a guild leader, I will like this. But if you're not whaling, like I know you can't whale and you're just giving me this, I might just kick you just to save your time. As a, this is a little silly thing to do. And for this, if you have these, just give it. There's no nowhere else to use this. Just give it. If you have it somehow from like daily logins or some other event, give it. Or if you're a whale and you're super nice, you can buy it from the market. The cash shop, I mean. So you can buy these from Mari's Secret Shop. For some crystals, so if you're if you're feeling extra nice for the guild leader, please do these. It will help the guild grow a bit much faster. But generally don't don't buy this. We'll let the wheels do this. Another materials you can get, well, you can see it here. You can buy it from this Mara Secret Shop for enhancing your gear. It's a lot, there's also cards. So this is something you manage on your own. Uh, although I do not endorse it, but you, you see these crystal prices and if it's um and if the currency uh, rate is let's say better from this Mari shop than the market you can get from materials from here. You see, maybe this one is more expensive in this market instead of Mary's Secret Shop. And you could convert your gold into crystals and buy uh, buy the materials from the cash shop like that. There are islands. I mentioned these islands in my last guide, so you can check them out. It gives you a lot of materials that you should definitely consider doing uh, pretty early on to boost yourself and skip tier 1 as a whole. There are also opponents. <sighs> these opponents can give you... Quite a bit of materials over a long time. You can get, see these uh, uh, leap stones as we call them. You can also get them from weeklies. But you should definitely do every single week. Fill these up. And these ones are exchanged for gold. So for enhancing, you can see these costs in the item codex that is given in the game. So you know how much you need, what is the success rate, and how much, how many uh, shards you need to enhance the gear. And the more we go, you see the gold price appears. Normally as a free to play you go on to level 15, plus 15 enhancement. And past that is a little whale level. So you can check out some other better gear score. This is level 302, which we'll get early on. Well, let's say for a higher end game ones, you can see that you need a lot of materials, a lot of gold, a lot of silver. You get to plus 15. It's so far manageable to be at plus 15, but look at the success, it's very low. So, that's why we go only plus 15 and don't go past there, because the success is very low and the material cost is super, super high. You're kind of kind of you're kinda getting scammed if you go past plus 15. Unless you're a whale, you can go ahead. And the increase in power is not too huge. It's actually kind of small, but people like to flex their numbers, so you can uh, generally ignore this as a free to play plus 15 is just enough all of your gadgets be plus 15 you stop there you get higher tier of gear transfer an enhancement you transfer an enhancement and then enhance the other gear you get 
can also get materials from this uh, ship. You can find it on any port. You can find it here. You can find it uh, here as well. Or any other area. I think even you can even find it right here. So you go to these ships. And you can uh, exchange your uh, coins for pirate coins. And you can use these pirate coins to buy some materials. And uh, these apply to any tier. And uh, of course it's weakly limited. Now about the class tier list. I see a lot of people asking me about what class is the best, what class I should go for. And for PvE, it generally doesn't matter. You can play anything you want. Everything is viable. In some situations, you cannot go some classes. Let's say Blade is a little niche. So if you have a Gunslinger, a Sorceress, who are classes who do not need any back attacks or head attacks. That's some other mechanic. They already do more damage based on your skill location. Like my shotgun skills have attack type from the back. But with these tripods, I pretty much ignore that. I, I, I don't need to do that anymore. And blade buffs back attack or front attack. And for that for that reason, these classes do not mix well since I do not get their power uh, synergy buffs. So it really matters to have a specific good comp. Let's say Gunslinger has a crit debuff. And you always want to have one crit debuffer in your party to do uh, a little bit more damage and needing less of this critical stat or the gear sets you can get. But overall, you can play any class you want. There are, there are no restrictions. If someone kicks you for a class, then they're being a little silly. They heard it pretty much incorrect information from somewhere and decided to follow it. There are no class discriminations. You can go any class, you will be accepted. Well, that is all for now. If you need any more guides or help, then please let me know in the comments and I'll try my best to help you out. Uh, and until then, see you later guys. Thank you for watching.